Good morning everyone, welcome to the Bain Rage Group Rugby Park today for the under 16's clash uh, of probably competition favourites, uh, the Marlins Rugby Union Club. Uh, the starting lineup for the Marlins Rugby Union Club is at number one, Brendan Lansdowne, number two, Reid Stevens, number three, Tom Atkins, number four, Blake Butcher, number five, Maxwell Cox, at number six, Zach Knott, at number seven, Ruben Kelsell, number eight is William Dance, at scrum half, Archie Budd, 10 is Zebediah Missos, number 11, Ainsley Dalton, number 12, Rowan Picker, number 13, Ikula Vihumatua Davis, uh, number 14 is Duke Rothorn, number 15, Kieran Lantry, and on the bench we have Dino Might and Braith Wilson. Snappers are a young team that are building and their starting lineup is number one, Blake Connell, number five, Jared Howe, number nine, Callock Stone, number 11, William McCormack, number 12, Nadia Manuel, number 13, Thomas Hoy, number 14, Ryan Miller, number 15, Morgan French, number 16, Cameron Mitchell, number 17, Blake Ninnis, number 18, Logan Clark, number 20, Connor Hennessy, number 21, Lachlan Hyde, and number 23, Ryde Collier, and finally 25, Max Pickens. Today's referee is Darren Jemison. He'll rule the game with an iron fist, so I'm sure we'll see a lot of flowing rugby, and hopefully it's a good day of rugby between both teams. Early try there to Blake Connell, number one for Snappers, taking the score to 5-0. Uh, it's a quick start for Snappers. They're a young team. They've been building for a couple of years. As I said, Marlins would probably be one of the favourites in the under-16s comp, so that's a great start for Coffs Harbour Snappers. It's a pretty tough kick here from the sideline. Wind's blowing towards him, so it'll be hard to get the distance. Good strike, just off to the left there. Keeps the score at 5-0, snappers. It's a great day for rugby this morning, beautiful weather. Uh, we've got two games here today, at simultaneous on the main field, which is this camera is 16s, and on the other field is the under 14s. Some really good young players here to watch early on. Marlins have gone long off the kickoff there. No one back for snappers. A great run there from number five from the snappers, Blake, uh, Jared Howe. His brother Blake last year played first grade, so he's got some good bloodlines. Snappers here just building slowly in their own half. Looking like there might be a clearing kick soon. Plenty of space out to the right. Great, that's great steal there from Marlins, uh, Tom Atkins. Marlins in great position here to get some points if they spread it left, the backs are screaming for it. Here they are, the back line play, spreading it left. Still more room out to the left, snappers haven't shifted. And that's a penalty there to Marlins. Snappers not rolling away. Boards are setting out to the right for Marlins here. And that's a steal to Snappers. It's a good turnover ball. Snappers really need to relieve some pressure here, and that's a great penalty for them. It's 
a great kick for touch there from the fullback for snappers. Morgan French. We've <laughs> got referees coach Ron Mansell here as well, keeping an eagle-eyed view on Darren Jemison, making sure he doesn't miss anything. Snapper's line-out has been a bit suspect across all grades this year, so hopefully that gets a bit better during the game. Plenty of space out wide here if they swing it. Wing is unmarked. It's a great run from the 12. Good clean out there from the 12. Nice run as well. Always plenty of passion in a Marlin Snappers game. Rivalry still lives on in the junior grades. That's a pretty blatant offside penalty there. Snap has gone a bit too early. Tom Atkins there with a big hit up off the penalty. Some strong D there from Snappers. Oh, this spotted a little knock on there. It's... Marlins is struggling to build some momentum in attack, but Snappers are stuck in their own 22. I think the Snappers might have them in terms of the pack size for the scrum, but Marlins have played together for some time, so that'll probably be a well-drilled scrum. Score remains 5 0 to Snappers. <laughs> 22 minutes to go in the first half. Having some trouble setting that scrum. I think the snappers will look to run it here. There's a fair bit of space out wide to the left. Probably their best backs player at the moment is, is the 15 uh, for snappers, young Morgan French, standing at 10 at the moment. Some more sp space out to the left if they swing it. Knock on there. Some quick turnover ball. There's a lot of space out left if Marlins swing it. Here we are. It's a kick to the middle of the field. Snappers pull back there is isolated. He needs to do a lot of work. He's lost the ball. Big chance here for Marlins to score if they can get a bit of composure. Setting left here, forward play.
20 minutes to go in the first half and Marlins are on the attack. And that's a try. I think that was a try to the most difficult name to pronounce in the team, number 13, Ukula Viamatua Davies. The score is 5 nil, a 5 all with a kick to come. Well, John, what's your th thoughts early on? Uh, how, how are the boys looking? The, um, the snappers started strong? Yeah, I think they started strong. I think Marlins are the short price favourite heading into the game, but uh, I think the snappers probably need to get a bit more field position. They're sort of stuck in their own 22, and um, it's never a good sign in junior rugby to spend a lot of time in your own 22, so if you I think field position is going to be key in this game. Guys are playing quite clean rugby, quite disciplined uh, for young fellas. Really, really good uh, indication of the future of rugby in Coffs Harbour. Yeah, I think so. I think you're seeing that um, Snappers and, and Marlins have played together for some time. They all come up through the Coffs Crusaders uh, pathway, which is a pretty big pathway for Coffs rugby. So uh, people like Paul Butcher have been nurturing the next line of talent for Coffs rugby for some time now, and it's good to see them come through. And um, as I said, that's a kick just wide, so score remains 5 all. Um, young Jared Powell, his brother played first grade last year, Blake Powell, so there's some good bloodlines in the teams, and um, I don't think it'll be long until these blokes are playing reserve grade and first grade for both teams. 19 minutes to go. Look, Ron, what are, you, what are your thoughts on what you've seen so far from the, uh, from the uh, under, under 16s? Referee's trying to play uh, quite a bit of advantage, and uh, the players are succeeding uh, in that advantage uh, uh, relatively uh, well. So we're not seeing too many penalties, which is great, uh, and a bit of continuity in play. Some clean turnover ball there to the snappers. Big chance if they can build from this. Advantage being played by referee Darren Jamison. It's a chance for Marlins to swing it out wide if they want to. It's plenty of space out there. They've got the numbers. It's a bit of an attacking kick. A great kick for touch there. It's not quite gone out, unfortunately. Snappers back on the attack around halfway with about 17 minutes to go in the first half. Snapper's getting a bit of a roll on through the forwards down the right hand side. Some simple pod phase work there. The backs are setting out to the left. Looks like there might be a play on within the next few phases. Here we go. It's a strong run, some big contact. High tackle. And Ron, for the people that are just watching rugby, what's the new laws in relation to the height of the tackle? It's a lot stricter this it's last few years. It's been a lot stricter the last few years. Basically, um, hitting anybody above uh, the line of the, uh, the armpits is going to get you a penalty. And then there's a, a menu of what happens after that as well. Um, but basically, a, 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 a high tackle that that's, uh, doesn't create any... Um, injury or danger um, and is just, just lazy, going to get you a penalty, but after that it sequences up to through a, a, a yellow and, a, and, to, and to a red, depending on um, how dangerous it was. 
it's probably something that differentiates us from rugby league. When you watch rugby oh, league, there's probably a lot of hits to the head that would get at least a penalty in Union. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think there's a lot of things that happen in rugby league that get somebody <laughs> on the sideline with a red card. Yeah. Pretty good position here for the snappers with a scrum about five in from the from the touch line. Backs are set out wide. It's probably the perfect place to have a scrum if you're a back. Solid push there. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, and we're on a counter attack to the Marlins. Oh. That's no advantage there. Marlins will get a scrum in the middle of the field, just outside their own 22. About 15 minutes to go in the first half. Beautiful day here at Bay Range Park. Big push there by Snappers. Isolated runner there. Snappers done well to recycle the ball. Darren Jemison's out there being very vocal with the young boys. That's a huge hit. Oh, young Nat. He's got a lot of heart. Snapper's getting a bit of mongrel about him here. Looks like they're on the roll. Oh, it's a penalty when they didn't need it. Penalty for not releasing there. Just got isolated, didn't have enough support. Oh, it's a tap in their own. It's another area the refs are looking at very tightly is the tackle area. Got to let the ball go as soon as you tackle these days. That's probably a bit high. That's what we were talking about before. It's just not much malice in it, but just a penalty. out to Marlins. Still five all with 12 minutes to go. It's been a good game so far. Oh. Chance to attack here for Snappers off a missed line out for Marlins. Spreading it wide now. Just not hitting the last pass. I think both teams have had chances, but it's a bit hard this year with a start and stop season to get that continuity. Need to get some support there. Done well to recycle that. Another knock on there to Snappers, just that pass going to ground one too many times today. And Ron, what are the three main things the ref's looking for at scrum time in terms of... Um, the first thing is what, what he wants is, is stability um, on the engagement so that before the ball comes in, everybody is, is pretty much standing still. Um, and then after that, he wants to have the contest occur once the ball's in. So if you get those two things happening, um, you're going to get a good scrum contest. Just trying to avoid the early push or the yep. scrum collapsing before it's even started. Yes, exactly. It's a good rake there from the front row. It's out the back quickly. It's a short arm penalty for 
appears to be for snappers. No, for Marlins. Taking the tap. Good long place there. It's another isolated run and a chance for Marlins to set up on the attack here, about 40 out. Good, strong run back there. The snappers pick and drive is pretty good. They're very tidy around the, around the breakdown. Yeah, I think they spend a lot of time at training working on that forward structure. That's a big run from mm. Might be the case that the backs are knocking it on too much, so the forwards have just decided to, to do it themselves. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And that's a big penalty to snappers. Great kick for touch there, that's a line out. About 10 out. Keep an eye out for young Ryder Collier in the 23 for the snappers. He's got a, plenty of pace. If he gets outside the backs here, it'll be a big chance of scoring. <laughs> oh, great line out play to the snappers there. Oh, he's got to stay in. Oh, big defence from Marlins. Um, no, you can't pass. That was a good move. Yeah. I like those moves where the number two gets uh, involved like that. Yeah, I think it's underused, especially when you're struggling at hitting the, the jumper. Yeah. I think the kids always enjoy a nice little trick play from a line out or a, or a scrum. There were, there were a couple in the Super Rugby game last night which were really, really good. One of which got a try, so. Scrum there to snap is about five out, seven minutes to go. Still locked up at five all. works even if it hit the ground play on there big chance down the left that's a try so number 16 from the snappers that's Cameron Mitchell got to play the whistle there I think Marlon stopped thinking it's probably going to be a turnover and Snappers played on and managed to sneak a try just before half time. Scores 10 5, they can kick to come. So I think that's a reward for some field position. young Morgan French kicking before the game. He's got no problem hitting the distance. It's just the radar's a little bit of a problem sometimes. So, see how he hits it. It's a good strike. That's <laughs> right over the black dot there. Yeah. 
12 ball after striking. It's a great kick there by Morgan French. 12 5 with about 5 minutes to go in the first half. Snappers haven't learnt that they go long every time. Still haven't got anyone back there, but he comes full back. Got a good step on him. Oh. That's young rider Collier there that made the break. Off to Morgan French. It's big contact between the 10 and the 15. Josh Howard needs to fight for the ball there, get to the ground. Signal please sir, what was that for? Holding on. And the snappers didn't let go of the ball there, that's the penalty. They just click it out and click it back in. Yep. And I've sent them to the place. Yep. The line out about. I think we've got told it yesterday. 22 yeah. out. We wouldn't be the only people that'd be travelling to an accommodation. We'd have to sort of sort that out. Yeah, well, why don't they tell you? I don't know. <laughs> Good line out there to Marlins. Backs are set out left. 15's going wide. Spat out the back. Marlins' attack does look good when it gets going. It's just missing that last pass. <laughs> Swing it left there. Blindside raid. Looks like the backs are setting up to get the ball here. Watch out for the 10. He's been running it hard for oh, it's a turnover and a, and a grabber from the props. Not what you want to see. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Young Matt Dunning out there doing everything. And he's through. This could be dangerous. Well, some big D there by the snappers. I think that was the prop making up for the grubber kick. It's going to be hard to stop from there. It's a good tee. Just a bit of space right. We've got the overlap here. 15's got to give it. Oh, that's a, that's a good winger's try there. 14's done well. Looks good to me. <laughs> 10, 12 with a kick to come. That's a good try to the young Duke Rosorn. Looks like the uh, water's warmed up and the Marlins are starting to run. <laughs> and uh, at the end of the day, it looks like, uh, what, are you, what are you thinking? The person with the, the team with the most points on the board is going to win the game? <laughs> yeah, something like that. I, I still think it's field position every time any team's sort of in their own 22. They're struggling to get out of it. And um, we're seeing when you get near the line, it's a big chance of scoring. A little bit of lack of discipline, a few, few penalties, but a pretty flowing game. I mean, th these guys are playing really structured, yeah, well structured football, aren't they? Yeah, I think Ron commented before that uh, especially the snappers like keeping it in the forwards and they like running that pod play. So um, I think the backs have probably been missing a pass or missing a set of hands today. So, um, yeah, it's been structured. Look, I know we've got, we've got a minute left in this half, but uh, is it going to be uh, fish and chips or marlin steaks tonight <laughs> at, the, at the Tommy Hotel? What do you think? As a, as a snappers man, I'd hope the snappers can go, but... So it's going to be tight. Just no. just missed to the left there. Scores 12-10. That's half, half time. Pretty entertaining first half there. A couple of tries apiece. Uh, conversion's the difference. So 
hopefully both teams can come back in the second half and uh, build from that. So it is half time. The referee's, referee's called half time. The, the boys are going to stop for, stop for a. Uh, no, is it? It's not not half time. It's confusion in the uh, confusion no, I think, I think in, it is. I think it is. in the commentary team. Yeah, no, Darren Jefferson is the uh, ruler of time, so just ignore the scoreboard. <laughs> That's half time. All right. Well, uh, when you have got the hand whittled African whistle, <laughs> you are in charge. Um, look, uh, so so what what have we seen so far? What do you think? Um, I think that really it's. It's probably missed opportunities more than anything. I think both teams look good when they get the ball, but then the last pass is going to ground. Um, young, young Morgan French, the snappers, has been pretty, pretty important. He's been running pretty hard, but in saying that, uh, Zebediah Missos for for Marlins has been pretty outstanding as well. Some big hits from those two people. Um, but yeah, I think it's just one of those games that could go either way. I think a little bit of momentum from either team, and you'll probably see the scoreboard tick over in the second half. And look Ron, what, what, are, you, what are your thoughts on the game and how, how things are flowing so far with this first 30 minutes of, uh, of young, young rugby union? Well, um, I actually think it's, it's going pretty well. Um, as I said a bit earlier, I, th I think that the snappers uh, forwards um, work really well at the breakdown. Uh, I think the difference between the two teams is that the, um, the Marlins back line seems to be a bit better than the, the, the Coffs back line, or it might be that the Coffs back line hasn't seen too much of the ball, but um, it's, it's a, a contrasting uh, between two different types of teams. One team wants to seem to play it in the forwards, the other team when they get the ball they're using it in the backs, and so you're getting um, a, a different style of football from two different teams. It's uh, interesting to watch. Look, the, um, I guess the, uh, the Marlins have responded. Every time the Snappers have scored, the Marlins have put their head down and come back. They're both, It's, it's going to be a tight second half. I, think I agree. That's, I think that's um, due to the fact Marlins, I think those Mar that Marlins team has been playing together since they've, they were you know, 10 years old. I think they've all come through together. So I think, um, as I said before, with Cos Crusaders rugby, they've all played a lot of rugby together. So I think there's a bit of resilience there when they know what they can do. So you're saying that the uh, the Marlins might be taking Snapper back to the um, the, the Coast Hotel uh, for uh, this tonight's special? No, I think I think we'll end up at the Tormenta Hotel with a bit of fresh Marlin on the plate, hopefully. <laughs> Wait and, and see. Uh, some of, some of the coldest beer in town in those uh, <laughs> those those two establishments, but these young fellows uh, would not know that. <laughs> no, uh, should not know that. Uh, no. Don't don't know that. No. Don't do it. No. Don't, don't have a beer. They don't know the pain of the lockdown when the pubs were shut. They. <laughs> yes. Juice uh, yeah. for you, um, uh, young fellas. Yeah. But I, it would be a big win for Snappers 16s if they could win. I think Marlins are probably the form, one of the form teams in the comp. So I think there's been a few years of Marlins vi victories over Snappers. So it would be a big win. Just got a little bit of a gentle breeze picking up. The sun's coming down. What do you think the temperature is? When I got out of the car this morning, it was 14. So I don't know what it is now, but no. that's what it was when I arrived here today. Oh, we'd have to be saying yeah, 16 yeah, to 18 yeah. now. I think the Walker boys will think it's the middle of summer coming <laughs> over from Walker today oh, for yeah. the later game, so I think yeah. it'll be great. Actually, um, and of course, um, as, as we go on throughout the day, we've got six six games we're live streaming today. Yeah. Um, and uh, thanks for, for joining, obviously, you guys, sh sharing the link and telling your friends. Um, it's going to be a great day, rugby. Walker is, um, is uh, not to be taken lightly. No, I've got some friends that play in the New England comp and um, the hot tip is that Walker are the team to beat this year in that comp. They've got, I think, three or four country representatives in the team and their back line and forward pack have been playing together for some years in Central North and Central North is a very strong comp. I think Ron's probably seen more of that than, than me. Yeah, well, Walker um, were... Um pretty close to the top of uh, Central North last year and um, they didn't they didn't win the grand final but uh, they were certainly in it um, and in the the, uh, the one game that's been played um, in the, the New England competition my mail is that uh, um, the people up there or my referee mates up there say that Walker's the, the top team they think and that uh, they also think that, it, that the game today 
is uh, one versus one or one versus two. Yeah. Um, the game that's being played here today. So that's that's where uh, that's where New England actually sees these two teams today. I've, I've heard a few rumours. I don't know if you can you tell me these are true or, true or not, but. Um these Walker boys, some of them are doing fencing and they don't use a hammer, they just use their fist. <laughs> I think some of them use their head. Yeah. yeah, if you've ever seen Cameron Sweeney, they're not a good looking bunch out from Walker. So. <laughs> Start of the second half, it's uh, 12 tender snappers. Off. Snapper still haven't set up for that kickoff. Oh, that's oh, high. That I think Ron, that might be that considering. Could be a, that could be a yellow, that one. We'll see. There is a bit more leeway in the junior ranks than the senior, but it was a pretty bad tackle. It wasn't a good one. <laughs> Over to referee Darren Jemison here. I think he's looks like he's keeping the card in the pocket. Yep. Probably is going to have a chat to him. I think that's as close as you want to go to a yellow. Calling out the captain and the seven there. I think he may well be. Yeah, I mean, what's, um, so what's being said out there now? Uh, I think Rod and I were just talking about it's very close to a yellow card. So I think he's going through that with the young bloke now. He's yellow carding. Yeah. He's yellow carding him. Um, and it, basically it's because we've had two high tackles already in the game um, and you know, we've got to improve the discipline, so yeah. and yellow I, card. And I think with that tackle, I think it, it, it didn't hit the shoulders, that hit the head. That's right. So that's something the referee looks at when making that decision. Not a great deal of intent and it was probably more of a lazy tackle than anything, but got to be careful. Rugby protects the head these days, so... Snappers really need to take advantage of this. Losing a breakaway might hurt the line out for Marlins, but see how it goes. Called that knock on there? He's called a knock on, yes. What's the rule about matching numbers in a scrum once the yellow card's been? Um, they have to match numbers, so um, red will have to drop one out. And that's a rule, that's that's a junior a, specific yeah. rule? Yes, it's under 19 rule. The other, the other thing that's supposed to happen is that it's got to be ba balanced, so the number eight for blue should be on the side of the scrum. Um, so we're not getting exactly what we're <laughs> supposed to have happen here. Always room for improvement. That's <laughs> why the referees have a coach as well. <clears throat> Scrum time's been pretty sloppy for both teams. It has. Pretty solid clean out there by Snappers. They've got to get over this. It's a good set, set up. I think that's what Ron was talking about before. The snappers love the ball in the forwards. It's got to get to the deck there. One of those other rules that not many people know about Ron is about the knees hitting the ground being the tackle. Yes, yes. Can, can be difficult when you're defending to let go of someone who's still sort of moving forward. But And, and in that situation, the referee's managing it. He's telling the players the tackle's happened and, and to let go. I think, he's, I think that was Snappers not joining the mall. Yeah, entry into, yeah. the, into the ruck. Into the ruck. Yeah. Come in from the side, basically. Oh, good kick there for touch. See how the line out goes. Snappers need to use their advantage while they've got it. Find the full man line out there. Marlins got to match the numbers.
done it again. Oh. Except, the, except the blue team read it. I think the coach might have wised them up to the <laughs> scrum play at half time. Looks like he's called. Maybe that. I don't think we'll see that move again today. No. Bit of bands there from the scrum after from Marlin, saying they've only got one line out play. Well done there by the hooker to follow the throw. Done well to get to the ground, but it looks like he's lost it. Got a blue knock on there. Watch the blind side play here. The 15's lining up down the blind side. Mm. He's been the main ball receiver for snappers all day. So watch the uh, eight pick off the back of the scrum to the 15. That'll be my tip if they can get clean ball. They're talking to each other. Yeah. Halfbacks talking to the 15. <laughs> Could be the double bluff now. <laughs> <laughs> I think the 10 for Marlins is watching it. That's tidy ball. Yep, yeah, there yep. we are. Open side. <laughs> oh, he's uh, got a great step on him, that 23. Piggies are rolling right there. Oh, isolated, but they've got to be quicker over the ball, snappers. Another isolated run, they've got to get with him. Good run, but. See what the referee says there. Knock on to against the snappers there. Twenty-three minutes left in the second half. Twelve ten to snappers. But no points in the second half yet. A big push from Snappers. Scrum's oh, quiet. blind pass. He's going to run it out. Into his own in goal. Frightening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a good steal. He's <clears throat> just gone off his feet, I think. No, hasn't released it. It's good. Good. I think we've seen the referee be very tight on the attacker releasing the ball. That's a Another area of focus this year. Yes, it is. <laughs> Snap is just setting up out to the right there. There's a little bit of space. Forwards is hammering it up at the moment.
Marlins have been happy to run it out of their own end. So, yep. Short arm penalty. Oh, pushing off the mark. He warned them at the last scrum that he wanted it steady and um, said that from now on he wasn't going to be resetting. And uh, they're a bit, a bit of a slow learner. They'll get the message and uh, we'll stop having the silly business happening at scrum time. So that was a, pen a short arm penalty for pushing early, basically. Early put, yeah. Yep. Some bandage being played to the snappers. Chance to swing it out to the left. There's not many numbers there at all for Marlins. They've been held up, unfortunately. And the difference between a short arm and a, and a full arm penalty, what's that? What's uh, that? Wrong? Well, we can't score off a uh, off a free kick, uh, which is the, the short arm. <coughs> and if uh, you kick for um, uh, distance um, and it goes out, um, you don't get the line out. Whereas with a penalty, you do. <coughs> Chance for a quick tap and to swing the ball out the short arm. He's so just about to water try. Yep. There's a try, I'm not sure exactly who to. One of the forwards, One of the forwards the eh? Driving through. Score is 17 10 with a kick to come. 18 minutes left in the second half. The thing that's worked for um, Coffs um, so far in this half is that the game has been played. At one end, yes. and uh, going back over the things that you uh, said uh, earlier, when a team is playing in their own 22, they seem to be vulnerable, mm. and the tries seem to come. And uh, Coffs are definitely playing at the right end of the field. Uh, yeah, I, and I think you find in junior rugby when the some of the blokes may not be able to kick the ball as far as the seniors, and yep. getting camped in your own 22, it can be hard, hard to out. get out. Yep. Um, yep. You often see them try and run it out, and, and again especially in junior rugby, that ruck is an area where there's a lot of turnover in junior rugby, whereas the seniors, you'll see the blokes recycle a lot better. Um, and the girls as well, so it's a good kick. Converted. Converted. 19-10. Said about 17 minutes to go. Oh, it is. What's that we're doing? Oh, you're peeling off clothes. Oh, yeah, it's hot up here. <laughs> Oh, that's Spencer on too. Oh, okay. I think Snappers have got to set up for a long kick. Marlins have gone long every time, but they're still set up for the short. It's out of the full. Kick off mistake. So when the ball goes out in the full run, what are the options for the... The options are uh, for um, the red team to either have a scrum, have it kicked off again, or accept the kick. If they accept the kick, there's a line out. So sometimes it's actually to their advantage, particularly when they try to do a short one and it ends up going it over the halfway line. Yeah. They can go and take the ball and do a quick throw in. Yeah. They've accepted the kick and it's play on. Update from the ground announcer there, number 25, Max Dickens, has got the last try. <laughs> Caleb Stone there, punching above his weight. Turnover oh, ball, this is away. Great intercept. Oh, oh that's a great. Oh. I, think, I think we might be seeing a penalty try there, but Darren Jemison's got the arm out for a He's penalty. Talk to a touch judge. I think he spotted a high tackle. What's his score? 1910. The red people. Marlon's on the attack there. Got to pass it. A couple. Oh, thirteen's missed a trick there. Some great cover defence from the snappers. That's a try. It's a try. Oh, 
try. Scores 19-15, 15 minutes ago. Well, the Marlins are really showing that they're in this competition and the game is not over. No, definitely not. I think junior rugby is always a game of momentum, so it could definitely swing. What's, um, what's the snappers coach saying to the boys now? What, hey, what messages is he sending out to the team so, you know, saying that um, you know, the Marlins are just, you know, the tide's changed, Marlins are, uh, 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 have found a bit of warm water and, and they're going for a swim? Um, I don't think he'd be too nervous. Uh, they've just got to go back to their structure. It was really a where intercept led to a bit of a break. And, uh, Marlins almost missed the opportunity down the left, but it's got to hopefully get back to their structure. <laughs> Close, but no cigar. 19-15. Had some great camera work there for that kick, just to show just shading the left up right. About 13 minutes to go. Crucial 15 minutes here. I think whoever scores next is a big chance of winning. That was a good steal by number 12. Yeah, bit of expansive play from Snappers. Probably just need to consolidate it. If I get that pick and drive going. Here we are. One's got some skill. Oh, that's a knock on there, unfortunately. We just lacked a little bit of composure, I think, there. Just to Similar to the first half, some great backs play, just not quite finding the last pass. Before we have the chance, I'd like to thank all of the sponsors, both Marlins and Snappers. It's been great to see Marlins and Snappers come together to uh, put a combined team in. Um, Ron must be good from your point of view. It looked pretty dire there for a while for rugby and Coffs Harbour. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> But, um, it's good to see the rivalry still going strong between Marlins and Snappers in the lower grades, but the boys get to go to school during the week with some bragging rights if they win, so... <laughs> Blue boy got over the ball quicker. Oh. It's a penalty for not releasing against the snappers there. And a quick tap. Not much going on. Strong run.
10 for Marlins has been probably one of their best players all day. Oh! oh. Just popped out of nowhere. That's Got some support. Oh. oh. Joining the rucking correctly, I think they're yep. on. Yep. That's a pretty relieving penalty with about. Uh, that kick's not gone out, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, that just made touch. Fullback missed it. It was a very relieving penalty and it'd be a coach killer as well. <laughs> I think the, the, the two for Marlins popped out of nowhere. The pillar defence for the snappers fell apart, I think. Line out's been an area of improvement for the snappers today. Let's see how it goes. Oh, change it up, unfortunately. The prop wasn't quite aware that that was going on, I think. Well, there's about eight minutes to go. Score wall remains 19-15. Following this game, the under-18s will be up, followed by the women's and then uh, third grades, which will be some great rugby to see. Third grade's always good fun. Penalty there to Marlins. Been reluctant to kick for touch, Marlins. They seem to be keen to run it. Well, a bit clumsy. Wow. Plenty of space out right. They've got a two men overlap if they give it. It's good play. He's got to come back in. Oh, that's great cover defence from the snappers. It's a great shot. Yeah. Warms the heart of every fullback out there, that one. That's given the snappers a lift. Young Ryder Collier with a great tackle there. Might have hurt him a little bit, but he's definitely saved the snappers. Oh, just over, unfortunately, there for snappers, but it's popped out the right way. Strong running. Oh, bit of lip there, and that's... Yep. Uh, the referee was absolutely <laughs> right. He's saying it's knocked forward by blue, no advantage, and then somebody gave him a mouthful from the blue side. Yeah. Anyone that's played a game under Darren Jemison knows that uh, that's any, any chat doesn't really go very far. There to snappers, yep. just called the game up. About six minutes to go. No injury time in junior grades. I think he's holding his family jewels. <laughs> Place no one wants to be hit. <laughs>
Typical halfback. He's losing. <clears throat> Big scrum here. If Marlins don't get a turnover, Snappers can run the clock out here. It's a great shot. The uh, 10 for Marlins has been putting shots on all day. I think. Snappers might want to send it a little bit wider. Done well to keep that. Snappers here. Just a, un, just a bit unpolished in their running. Number nine for Blue has uh, lost a little bit of his equilibrium. He's uh, a little bit excited. <laughs> and uh, even his teammates are telling him to settle down. <laughs> Ron's got the benefit of uh, hearing the referee's mic feed, I think. So he's yes. hearing what's going on. And... Nice little backs play there by Marlins. Oh, nice little spin. Oh, oh, this is... 15's got a chance here. Oh, the bounce has done him in. They need to recycle that. Oh, I think they've snappers have done well there. Bounce of the ball can be cruel. That would have put Marlins ahead if that bounce found hands. 19-15, about two minutes to go. This is crucial stuff here. Oh, it's a knock on. Oh, that... Referees found an offside, I think. He did. Chance again, and they got to swing it. Oh, oh, here we are. That's a try to win it, probably. Yep. Under the post, that's 20 to 19. The Marlins kick to come. The tide certainly has turned and uh, looks like the, the snappers are starting to swim against the current. <laughs> I think they've been taken out by the tide. <laughs> it's um, kicked to come uh, in front of the post and uh, what, how long we got on the clock? Minute. Can the snappers pull something out of the bag now? What, what, what are we going to see when they kick off? me I'd be kicking short and trying to contest the ball but uh, I don't know what they're going to do. Wouldn't be much left in the game after this kick I don't think. A minute 20 so far. We should get the ball back into play um, after the, the kick. Kick is successful it's 22 to 19. Capping the score in the under 14s looks like Marlins ran away, winners 26 to 12. So, a strong spot for both 14s and 16 so far. What sort of condition is the number two field in? Uh, it's been in pretty good nick. It, it probably runs a bit quicker than the, than the main field. It gets cut a bit shorter and it's a bit harder. Um, it's so I think you'll find it's conducive to a bit of running rugby over there. So I just remember in previous years, if we had a lot of rain, it was a bog. Yeah, there's a lot of draining work done on the main field, uh, which I think has helped the second field as well, and um, it's held up pretty well so far. It's probably a penalty that might ice the game there for Marlins. There's not long left now, under 30 seconds. If they're smart here, they'll... Probably just keep it in the forwards and then uh, just not kick his 
He's not kicked that out. This is a chance for Snappers. Bit of a counter attack. He's very isolated, the winger. Oh, he's good. Uh, I think that might be it. It is. It's a good win to Marlins there coming back. I don't think they led until the very last minute of the game, so 22 19 the win to the Marlins. And um, the Marlins have taken out both grades, the uh, under 14s and under 16s. Um, Glute. Magic fish look like they're going to be strong in the future. <laughs> yeah, uh, Marlins have probably been one of the strongest junior clubs in the sort of mid north coast area for a while. Them Pirates and Vikings has had a couple of big games over the years. So I think uh, for snappers that probably hold their head up high, that's probably the standard for the comp. And they led all but all but for the last minute of the game. <laughs> How long before we get the under-18s on? Uh, under-18s will be on pretty much uh, within the next five minutes, I think. So. Radio guys, we'll be logging out here um, on this feed, but of course, tune in, subscribe to, to Kyle Hands Media. Our next game will be up, the under-18s. They'll all be individual links. Um, like and share it. We'll do, uh, it's on the uh, you know. Coffs Harvest Snappers page. and the Yeah, if you, if you can't find it, then you're probably not watching it right now. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. of course, uh, we're, we're going live because uh, not everybody can be here. There is a limit to the amount of players due to COVID, that, uh, but spectators that can be. Uh, each, each player can only bring one spectator. Um, so, uh, hope you've enjoyed, enjoyed the commentary and uh, we'll be back with the under 18s very soon. Coaching the next referee. Oh, here. Seeing as there's no garbage up here today.